Welcome to Football Game Plans FCS Kickoff presented by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is the producer behind the boards as we bring you our 2018 Missouri Valley Football Conference season preview. We'll kick off this 2018 Missouri Valley Football Conference preview by taking a look at some of the key storylines as we go into our four-minute offense. The Western Illinois Leathernecks will have a new head coach this year in Jared Elliott. Now, it's not totally new per se, as Elliott was the offensive coordinator last year under then-head coach Charlie Fisher, who left for Arizona State in the offseason. Continuity is king in college football, and I like the move to hire from within. Elliott has some good pieces to work with, especially on offense with quarterback Sean McGuire and running back Steve McShane to hit the ground running this season. The North Dakota State Bison returned to the top of the FCS last season by winning the national championship, and as with any reigning national champ, the question then becomes whether or not they can repeat as champs. I think the answer, specifically speaking about North Dakota State, is always going to be yes. The road to get there, in my opinion, is what will be the focus. Now, will they lose a few games in the regular season and have to take a longer route, or will they run the tables and make their route even shorter? The only definitive claim that I'm willing to lay my money on is that they will definitely be in the playoffs in 2018. And speaking of the playoffs, how many will represent the Missouri Valley Football Conference come December? Last year, we saw five teams make the playoffs, and that seems to be the standard number for the Valley. However, this year, with the way the teams are shaping up heading into fall camp, we can see them push for six, maybe even seven teams. I know that may be a bit far-fetched, but it does just speak to the level of talent from top to bottom that this conference possesses. It's going to be a fun year to watch in the Valley. And finally, Indiana State head coach Kurt Mallory enters his second season at the helm and is coming off of a winless 2017 campaign. However, as with many things in life, numbers always lie. The Sycamores weren't as bad of a team as their record indicated, and in my opinion, the experience and bad taste of last season is what fueled winter conditioning, fueled spring workouts, and ultimately will fuel fall camp. I know Coach Mallory is a great coach. The foundation built is solid, and so will the Sycamores in 2018. As we get ready to kick off the start of summer workouts and fall camp, we will give you a look around the conference at some of the conference's best, and we'll start by unveiling our all-conference team, beginning with the offensive side of the ball. Our 2018 preseason All-Missouri Valley Football Conference offense is led by quarterback Easton Stick of North Dakota State, who's coming off of a national championship season where he threw for just over 2,400 yards, 28 touchdowns to only eight interceptions. It also features three Illinois State Redbirds and three Youngstown State Penguins. South Dakota's Shamar Jackson balled out last year for the Coyotes. The 5'9", 160-pound speedster averaged 14 and a half yards a catch, hauling in 53 receptions and scoring four touchdowns. He broke out last year within that offense and is looking to crack the 1,000-yard mark this upcoming season. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, and it's all about pressure. And when you look at that defensive line that features Darren Greenfield, Kalen Saunders, Aaron Steidel, Ricky Neal, you definitely get a ton of that with this group. North Dakota State Bison linebacker Jabril Cox was sensational last season for the Green and Yellow. He won Newcomer of the Year last year within this conference after finishing with 75 tackles, 13 TFLs, and four and a half sacks, all the while only starting eight games. Needless to say that he's destined for big things out there in Fargo. And wrapping up our preseason all-conference team with the specialist Western Illinois, Steve McShane was a nuisance for opposing defenses last season, rushing for nearly 600 yards and seven touchdowns. But his punt return ability is what lands him on this list after averaging an eye-popping 18 and a half yards per return, bringing one back to the house for a touchdown. Now it's time to take a look at each team around the Missouri Valley Conference and we'll start with the North Dakota State Bison who looks like a team that's not rebuilding or reloading for that matter. They're simply remaining. This team has depth and the talent on both sides of the ball that should be able to control the line of scrimmage on both sides as well. Having stellar quarterback play always keeps them ahead of most. The schedule sets up pretty nicely for them as they won't leave Fargo for the first month of the season. The South Dakota Coyotes, fresh off of a 2017 playoff appearance, look to make it a routine thing for this program. And I'm excited about the defensive potential of the Coyotes. They were dreadful in 2016, markedly better last year. And with the starters that they have back in the fold this season, they should be even better. And that'll help them out in the ever so tough Missouri Valley Football Conference. Offensively, many will be surprised at how effective they'll be with new starting quarterback Austin Simmons at the helm. 
he's not Chris Strebler, and the good part is he doesn't have to be. Simmons is his own player and a productive one at that who won some games for them last season. And we'll learn a lot about this team pretty quickly as three of their first four games are on the road. In my opinion, the Coyotes are for real. I believe a lot of folks are sleeping on the Illinois State Redbirds. Head coach Brock's back has to love the makeup of this 2018 squad. The Redbirds should be able to bully folks up front behind a great offensive line and a strong stable of back. Those are two staples of this Illinois State program under Brock's back. Now, the cause for concern would be if the turnovers in the passing game begin to rear its ugly head once again. Defensively, the defensive line is where you can have a cause for pause as they'll be replacing a good piece of production up front. However, iron sharpens iron, so I don't think the drop off from last year's defensive line will be all that significant. So keep an eye on Spax Redbirds this upcoming season. The Jackrabbits have a lot of questions regarding their passing game coming into the season as they lose two tremendous talents to the NFL, but I do think as long as quarterback Taron Christian is at the helm, they should be just fine. So look for South Dakota State to get multiple people involved in their passing game while still being able to rely on their outstanding ground game. Defensively, they're led by linebacker Christian Roseboom. The Jackrabbits secondary, I believe, has a chance to be special, especially on the corners. Senior Jordan Brown has locked down capabilities. Now the schedule looks tough, especially in September, but even with that said, they still have a chance to make some noise September 1st as they open up against the Iowa State Cyclones. There's a lot of optimism this upcoming season for the Youngstown State Penguins. I know many have questions about their 2018 offense, which only returns four starters, but they are key returning starters. In fact, their offensive line and run game should spearhead their attack this upcoming year. But the biggest move is naming wide receiver coach Brian Chris the offensive coordinator. Coach Chris is one of the best offensive minds in football, and to me, that should alleviate any concerns that may be out there on that side of the ball. Defensively, expect the Penguins to be even stronger within their front seven this year, so I don't foresee this team missing the playoffs in 2018. The Northern Iowa Panthers have been one of the more consistent teams in the FCS under head coach Mark Farley, who's entering his 17th season. They're consistent because they play a style of game that is tough for teams to compete against down and down out. They are physical up front and force you to remain disciplined the entire game. This year, they'll be much better on offense than on defense, in my opinion, at least early on. The hope is that they can start the year like they finish, and in order for that to happen, guys on the defense side will have to jail pretty quickly. I think quarterback Eli Dunn is trekking in the right direction, so they'll be consistent enough there to win some games. They open up the season with a huge test against Montana. The Western Illinois Leathernecks will be just as formidable as they were last season. Offensively, they'll be just fine. Like I mentioned before, if you have a stable quarterback, you're going to win some games. And they have that and they have a strong running game as well. The offensive line will be a bit of a concern because they lost four seniors up front. Defensively, they'll have to be much better inside the red zone. Obviously, losing a guy of the caliber of Brett Taylor is huge, but you got to give credit to the rest of the guys on that defense. There's some studs returning, and I think they'll be much better on that side of the ball than most people think, which will ultimately make them a team to keep an eye on coming out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Saluki's head coach Nick Hill enters his third season at SIU and is ready for his squad to take a big step this upcoming season. Now, their backfield takes a hit as they lose to Quan Isom, and losing Austin Olsen up front is definitely a big one. But there are 15 returning starters, seven on the offensive side, so all is not bad for the Salukis. In fact, as long as quarterback Sam Straub can stay healthy, it should be all good. Where you want to see growth is on the defensive side of the ball, especially as far as run defense and takeaways are concerned. How much better they get defensively could determine how high the Salukis rise in the conference standings. The Missouri State Bears, just like the Southern Illinois Salukis, hope that this year they can make a charge up the conference standings. For the Bears, it's all about being able to find consistent and efficient offense. If that doesn't happen, then it'll lead to quick three and outs on offense and a tired defense being put back on the field. In my opinion, the talent is definitely there for the Bears to succeed, and so is the coaching with head coach Dave Steckel. College football is all about process, and Steckel's process, in my opinion, will have the Bears playing more consistent for the entire season, and their record will definitely Definitely reflect that. The Sycamores have nowhere to go but up after finishing 0-11 last season. I honestly think defensively, they'll be one of the better teams in the conference. Their questions, in my opinion, solely lie on the offensive side of the ball. Indiana State has to find a quarterback that's consistent and talented and also have to replace stellar tailback Lamonte Booker. So offensively speaking, getting better there will definitely help their cause in 2018. Like I said on the FCS opening drive podcast, they'll get four to five wins in my opinion, which should shape up for an even better 2019 season. So I think this year's team is just a year away from being where they want to be. 
So that's a wrap from Football Game Plans FCS Kickoff. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the FCS Opening Drive podcast on iTunes and also on SoundCloud where Dave Hashagan and myself dive deeper into the world of the FCS. And don't forget to subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network on YouTube where you can find all of our FCS video content at youtube.com slash football game plan.